Hello and welcome, my name is Maxim and today is the time for the second video about GoDot. Uh, so we are, in this video we are going to continue using the animation player, but also we are going to configure uh, movement of our hero. And let's start by creating a new project. As usually, click new, select place where you're keeping your project, create folder. Like I'm going to call this one slime because we are going to use slime as main hero. Select current folder, create. Let's wait for tool to be open. As usually, go to the tell to do. And uh, as in the previous video, first we are going to create world. But in the previous video, we used only one scene. And in current, we are going to have three scenes defined. So let's save this one. I created a separate folder and let's create two additional. So I can click plus here and new scene is created and in this case i'm going to use area to 2d because area 2d is used for collision and we are going to detect collision between two areas so that's why we are choosing area 2d so it will be uh, area 2d as the root node i'm calling it slime and also like let's save let's save it and let's create another area 2d it will be food because we are going to create slime which eat some food so here you see this exclamation mark it said that we don't have any collision shape it will we will go into edit later as for now let's import our assets so i'm using the assets from craftpeaks.net and links will be provided in the video description i already downloaded them so let's import. So we have, uh, like, let's create folder first, assets. Okay. So, and I would import. We have vegetables and we have our slime. So I'm going to import this. It's imported in not correct place. So what do we have? So we have our vegetables. So there is a lot of them. We're not going to use all of them. We, we just use a few. And we have the slime. So there is the multiple uh, assets, but we need just walk, nothing else. And now it's time to add Sprite to D, everything as it was in the previous video. And on the texture, I'm going to drag this walk animation. And as you see, we have a lot of slime. So we need to count how many of frames do we have? So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here in animation, I'm going to, in the H frames, I'm going to type eight and we have just one uh, slime. And let's do the same for the foot. So I'm going to use here sprite 2D, create. And uh, I would choose like random because we're going to change later is through, through the code. So it's too big, so I'm going to make it smaller and let's change transform back to the original position. We will see if it will be enough. And let's add those two new scenes to the, our world. So previously we click like plus to add new, but in this case we are not adding new zone, but we are creating the in, like child scene. So I'm going to click here, instantiate child scene and i would choose slime and i'm going to repeat the same for food so yeah food is still too big so let's back to the food and let's change reset transfer position so yeah now it's look better so i'm going to move food somewhere right here and let's move also slime somewhere right here and we can try to uh, launch our game so i'm click here it's asked me to select main thing i'm going to click select and i would select the world okay so let's wait for game to start it yeah so this is what we have no movement nothing else just two sprites so let's close this one and let's back to the game now we want to create movement for our slime uh, so Godot has already defined a lot of 
uh, kind of actions, but we're not going to use the default one. We would create new one. So I'm going to click project, project settings. And in project settings, uh, there is Okay, so here is the project settings. Mm, so we have here input map. So I can click here, show built-in actions. And there is a lot of predefined actions, like, but we will create new. It's really simple. At add new action, I'm going to type like move left, then move right, move up, and move down. So we have defined or actions, uh, but now we need to assign keys for each of them. So I can click plus here, and I can just like, in, in my case, let's move left. So I can type on my keyboard A, and it's automatically selected. And also I want to use the left arrow on my keyboard. And I'm going to repeat the same, D and right, up, W and up, and here S and down. So now we define it our movement. So I can close this window. And uh, now we need to create a sprite. I'm sorry, script for the slime to detect uh, if we have some movement. So I will click here, add new script for our slime. Uh, let's create scripts folder in the root. So let's move here, new folder, scripts, and slime gg. Fine. It's fine. It used inherits area 2D because our root object is area 2D. I can do, like, we don't need this. So let's click create. So we have the empty script. Uh, so we have function which is called process. It's function which is executed every frame. So here we are going to uh, detect our movement and move our slime. So there is like the long way how to do it. So for example, we can do something like this. If input uh, is key pressed and I'm sorry, not key is action is action pressed. And here uh, we have those actions which we define it and we have those built in. So I can, for example, do uh, move left. And what do we want to change? We want to change the position. But before this, we need to understand how the position works. So here in the transform right now, we have position x at 0 and y at 0. So if I'm going to move object to the left, we have uh, x with the minus. But if I move right, it will be with the plus. Same for the y. If I move top, it will be y with minus. And if I move uh, down, it will be with plus. So if you want to move left, we need to uh, decrease the position on x. So I can, but let's do move right, for example, move right. We want to increase position, so I can do something like this, and let's some some speed. So now, when I run the game, okay, game, and when I press, it move to the right, and then I can repeat the same multiple times so i can do another condition but it's not really convenient what i can do i can do get vector and let's see what this function get vector is doing so it's accept for like four arguments even five like negative x positive x negative y positive y and it will return the number in range from one to zero it will return a vector two with one or zero. So let's see what we can do with that. So let's back to the script. And here, let's define. So first it will be move left. Then we want to have move right. Then we need negative y. It will be move 
up and finally positive y move down and we no longer need input we would create direction variable and right now let's just simply print what the direction will be in our case so i can run the game and as you see here it showed as zero 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 so if i click something it's changed to the minus one one you see it's changing value all of the time so what we are going to do with this we are going to change position so position but previously we used position x but we no longer need this because we multi, uh, we like adding vector two which has which has value x and y so we are going to change position we are going to add direction but simply adding direction would really make any changes because it will be just one we need like it will be very slow so we need to define some speed so let's create speed two and also what we can do we can add here export so what does it mean so once i added here export uh, immediately here i can in like from the ui i can change the value of of the speed without changing the code like if we need something for testing so now i can run game let's start okay well it's not starting okay okay so here is the game and i can press like any key and you see it's moving moving pretty slow so probably we need to increase uh, speed but it's fine for now but also we have a problem because uh currently it's frame dependent so my computer like run frame with certain speed between frames and on slower computer uh, this time between between frames can be the longer and it will move really slow no, sorry i forget to multiply here speed because that's why it was like very slow uh, so now we have speed and to make it like not the frame dependent by but time dependent we are going to use this variable which is called delta so this is the time between two frames in this case by introducing this delta uh, our hero would move with the same speed uh, no matter like what uh, performance of your computer but in this case when i start it will move really slow so i need to increase speed a bit and start the game and now it still move a bit slow so we can probably increase something to 300 it should be fine so now we have the movement so next step would be to add animation so we're going to create two animations one is uh, like idle and second one is movement so let's add animation player we should be already familiar with that go back here create two animation first animation would be the idle and in the idle animation i'm just going to create animation for the first frame so here i have this key a frame and i can just add it right here I click create and we have just single frame animation i can change like it's really not moving but i'm going to change duration to the duration of uh, like this frame uh, next animation which we are going to do that will be walk okay let's set it to the zero and we are going to like in the same like as previously use the frames but i already did for idle it has frame zero so i don't want to repeat uh, this frame when i'm starting like to, to walk so that's why i'm going to start with the frame one and let's zoom here a bit and what i'm going to do is simply click on this property frame and as you see here one added and it's automatically increased to the two so i need to repeat the same seven times and finally i want to get back to this frame zero 
and I see the duration of my animation is 0 0.65, so I'm going to change it here. And also I want my animation to repeat because right now if I run, let's back to the zero. So it move and it stop. So I want it run continuously. So I'm going to click here, animation looping. And now I can start, you see it's moving. Let's stop. Uh, but next we want to like make changes to the code for this animation to play. Uh, first, we need animation player. I'm going to use on ready var animation player in the same way as we did in first video. And I want to execute animation only when there is movement happening. So I, I would add condition. So I'm going to check if direction equal to vector two dot zero. So what does it mean? That means it return like vector two with values zero and zero. Uh, so as we saw from the, our example, when we uh, printed uh, values of our direction, it has like based on the button which you are clicking, it change value from uh, zero to one. But if we have like vector two with two zeros, that means our hero is not moving. So if it's not moving, I'm going to animation player, play idle animation. In other case, I'm going to run, like, sorry, not the run, but play. I'm going to play animation box. Now let's run game. And if I'm not moving, my hero, no animation is playing, but if I'm starting to move, you see it's moving. But there is another problem. Uh, it's not changing direction, so it looks like it's always uh, moving to the right. So we want to change that. So we can flip Sprite. So if we open uh, here Sprite 2D, and on the offset, there is the option flip horizontally and flip vertically. So if I move uh, my cursor here, it said property flip H. So flip underscore H, we should be able to use this from the code to change uh, direction, but we need first to receive the sprite. So let's use sprite, sprite to D. And now we need, uh, when we are walking, we want to change. So we need to add additional condition. So if direction dot X more than zero, uh, so that means we are moving to the right so we don't need to flip so i'm going to do sprite flip h equal to false but in other case so i can do simply else we want to uh, flip the sprite so i will add true and now let's launch the game so now I'm moving here to the right and you see direction is changing. Uh, and finally, what's left is collision. So let's start with the foot and let's open the foot. Let's open our foot and I'm going to add additional node, which is called collision, collision shape to the, uh, and when this added, you see there is no more exclamation mark, but now we have here because we need to provide a shape. How to provide the shape? So here on the right side, on the shape, there is the multiple options. So I'm probably going to use circle shape. And let's increase the size of our collision because our vegetable is a bit bigger. So here we have the collision. And let's do the same for the slime. So I'm going to add collision shape to D. Okay, and here I think I would use capsule shape because probably it's more uh, similar by size. So let's move it right here. Let's go down and let's increase. So it's not okay like this. 
and let's increase a bit size. Something like this, I think, should work. Okay, so this is done. But now we want something to happen when our slime collide with uh, vegetable. Uh, so, uh, and area to dim in the signals. We already used signals in the previous video, so but area to dim has different. So, because our two objects are area, so we can use area entered. So, I would click connect, select. Uh, my slime and immediately I have on area enter uh, method created and area in our case this is the object which we colliding with so once we if you colliding with vegetable it will be the vegetable so what I can do I can type q3 q3 uh, like once frame is completed it will remove the object so let's start game and now let's collide this vegetable okay so it's done but we have a problem uh, let me quickly show you so let's go to the world and what i'm going to do i'm going to add here area to d i'm going to add like sprite and collision shape so collision shape i'm quickly add like some texture to the sprite uh, we use walk so let's use the same walk i know that there is eight frames so we we have another slime let's move it somewhere here and let's create collision shape um, circle let's move it here so it's really small one but for demo purposes it should be fine and let's start the game and now, so I can still collide with my veggie, it's fine, but I can also collide with sprite, and we don't want our sprite uh, slime to eat another slime. So how can we prevent this from happening? Uh, there is multiple way to achieve this, and in this case, we are going to use physics layers. So I can open uh, project settings. So here, project, project set. And on general, I can move down and here is 2D physics. So we have a bunch of layers. So they already exist, but it makes sense to add names to them uh, to like easily track what's going on. So first I'm, go I'm going to name as slime. And second, I'm going to name as food. And now we can use those. So let's go here to the slime. Uh, let's open a root node. And here there is the collision. So we have the layers. So uh, on the layer, I need to define on which layer my object exists. And I call this layer slime. So it makes sense to exist on the layer one. But mask is the uh, object which we are going to collide with. So if we want for slime to collide with food only, I'm going to select mask as two because we called uh, this layer as food and I don't want to collide with another slimes. And let's save the scene and let's do it for the food because food uh, it's collision. So food is located on the layer two and we are going to collide with the slime so we are changing layer to two but mask keep it one and now let's back to the world let's select our slime and because our slime is slime and it shouldn't collide uh, with other slime so i'm selecting the layer as one which is called slime and mask as food and now when i run the game and i can collide but nothing happening but full food still is working fine uh, but also we want our slime to become bigger once he eats some food so let's implement those and it's pretty simple so we need to go to the script and every time on area enter to d in this method so when we are eating uh, 
our food, we're going to increase property scale. So our uh, slime object, it has on transform, it has the scale. So if you move here, inside property scale. So I can change property scale and I'm going to multiply it something like 1.1. And now once I eat uh, food, uh, slime should become bigger, but let's go, go back to the food for a minute uh, because I want to be able to create food with different sprites. How can I do it? So we're going to attach a script to the our food. So create new script. I'm going to create script in scripts folder. Open area to gym, create. So we can create variable, uh, something like image. And I'm going to use preload function and select here my image. So it will be like one. So what's preload function it's doing? It's a load from file system during runtime resource. And uh, let's back to the foot. What I can do next, I can add here export. So now I have this variable exported and I can change the value uh, from uh, like the editor when I want. And we need to set this. I'm going to do this in the ready function. And we want to change the sprite. So I need to re receive the sprite so it will be on ready sprite equal to sprite so in sprite if i open sprite and there is the texture so i can use property called texture so i simply go into execute sprite dot texture equal to image so right now nothing happened everything should work in the same way as it worked before. So let's start the game and let's confirm that. So we have the slime, which we should delete and we have the food. Okay, that's working fine. Let's close the game. Let's delete this slime and let's create additional food. So I will select and I'm going to click Ctrl plus B and it will create a bunch of food. Uh, so first we want to change the position of every to not be everything in the one position. So yeah. And now I can go to the my assets and I can just simply change uh, image for all of my sprites. But you see here, like it's still showing this broccoli. Uh, because it's selected uh, from the UI, but real image would be different. So now let's start the game. And as you see, every veggie has different image and now I can eat all of them. So, and as you may see, our slime becoming bigger. So uh, that's all what I wanted to show you today. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.